So bow your heads with me, if you will. Father, I'm asking, Lord, that you would bless us as we go into the word of the Lord. Dear God, there's so much that's needed right now. Father, we can't do this without you. It's got to be you that's going to do this to the glory of God. Bring on the real manifestation and cause this church to flourish mightily and bind up the enemy and every principality. We lose your liberty now, God, in the midst of the people of God. In Jesus' name, and everybody say with me, amen and amen. As you open the word of the Lord to the book of Nehemiah, I'm going to share something with you that you possibly know and don't know. And the Lord told me to deal with this because these are areas that we must understand the calling of the Lord. In the hallway, get everybody together back there and tell them, look, either get in and get the word or sit down somewhere. Don't have a conversation outside the conversation I'm having right here. This is the most important time. In Nehemiah chapter 6, beginning at verse 1, read with me. Now it came to pass when Simbala and Tobiah and Gishma the Arabian and the rest of the other of our enemies heard that I had built the wall and that there was no breach left therein. Though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates that Simbala Hold on for a minute. Come down with that mic. I'm reading now. That Simbala and Reed sent unto me saying, Come let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messages unto them and said, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. While should, why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort. And I answered them and the same manner then, then sent Simbala, his servant, servant unto me in like manner, in like manner the, fifth the fifth time with an open, open, letter, uh, open letter in, in his, hand. his hand, wherein was written, it is recorded among the heathen that what? Saith it that thou and the Jews think to rebel, for which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king, according to these words. Verse 7. And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah, and now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. Then I sent unto him, saying, There are no such things done as thou sayest, but thou feignest them out of thine own heart. Stop right there. Let the church say amen. amen. You may be seated. I need to express this to you more now than ever before. Some of the biggest dangers that you have when you're working for God is the enemy is on his job doing everything in his power to bring forth a breach. Somebody say a breach. A breach is a gap where the division comes when the adversary begins to sow negativity. And any time you meet people that's got something negative to say, look at their lives. You are what you eat. And I'm talking spiritually when it gets down to a portion of your life when you're having difficult times with you that mean everybody else is to blame. And now, here it is, Simbala, Tobiah, and Gishma. 
they begin to mark the wall when they first started the work. Now that they see the walls were up and the doors had not yet put, been put on the gate, immediately they begin to complain and begin to say, don't you know I'm sending you an open letter. I'm sending you fraudulent papers because these papers are not authentic. They have no seal from the king on it. This is coming from you. The real seal that you get from the king would be something that the king said and immediately it could be brought into question. But I want you to know they couldn't find no real person to do it so they just made up something. Somebody said the devil is a liar. Don't you know how many times people will make up something on you and find something wrong with you if it's just that your shoelaces are not tied? People have a side of them where they can come out and they can dis degrade and disbar everything that God has called you to be in the midst of. But at the same time, your challenge is to know what's of God and what's not of God. Can I get a witness here? A lot of people don't know what's of God because their discernment factor is very low. But anytime you get into the spirit of God, and that simply means you begin to read your Bible. You begin to seek God's face in his word. You find out what's of God and what's not of God. And of course the devil knows that you, if you don't read your word, you listen and you're wide open to other people with an open letter. You see how they sent that open letter? Well then basically... The open letter in many people is what's coming out of their heart. And the Bible said the heart above all things is deceitfully and desperately wicked. God says, but who can know it? He said, I, the Lord, I try the rings. God says, I know what's in your heart, whether to do good or to do evil. And the moment you begin to think, take on the challenge of evil, then God says, now I'm sending you an open letter and this letter is going to be sealed with my stamp on it. Can I get a witness here? And I want you to know anything that come out your mouth that's not by me is going to die and you're going to die with it. Life and death is where? In the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat of the fruit thereof. The fruit tree in your life can't be set up on you. Because if God's going to grow anything, he's got to have some depth to it in case a storm comes. Y'all not talking to me here. I know you want some consolation, but let me argue with you for a few moments. And then you base it on the facts of truth. Many of you are questioning people's lives and your life is in jail. We all must appear before the judgment seat of God. Every one of us, we can't be busy bodies in other men's matters. I ain't got time to get my nose in your business. God understands where you live, and when he knocks at your door, he begins to say, wait a minute now. When MC Hammer made Hammer Time, y'all remember that? That's when we won the pennant, right? For the Pistons, right? It's Hammer Time. Hammer Time was made in Chicago. They thought they was going to hammer. We end up being the hammer. Now, what am I trying to tell you? It's Hammer Time. Because God's word beats like a hammer. Everybody can't praise him. Thank y'all for praising God over here. I said God's word beats like a hammer. See, they can't still praise God over here. God's word beats like a hammer. I go back over here. God's word beats like a hammer. By time, it's weak, but it's coming on. When God's word become the pound at your door, he going to test something up. And he wants you to get that thing in order. If I don't get convicted about my life, I'm worried about somebody else's life. My life is raggedy. All I got to do is get people in vice, influence, and I know you ain't got nothing. You just as dumb as all get up and mean as five junkyard dogs tied together. And God says, what in the world is wrong over here? Don't you know God says, I'm examining the fruit on your tree because I am a fruit inspector? You didn't know God was a fruit tree inspector? 
Well, maybe you didn't know Galatians chapter 5. For the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, temperance, and against such there is no law. Now, if I'm going to have something from God, I got to get the right. I got to get the right. Y'all didn't want to say that. It looked like it just hard to come out your mouth. God is checking your fruit. Do you love people when they do things to you? Because if you don't love them, there's a breach. And anytime you got a breach and you murmuring and complaining, God says, I was testing you to see if you was going to open your mouth. You got to go back and take that test again. Everybody know in school, if you flunk it, you got to pass it again. And the next time you get tested like that, you say, oh, no. Lord, put a watch over my mouth. I learned how to be quiet. I learned how to move in season. What to say, how to say, and even out of season. Because people have done some crazy things to me. And I've had to learn how to get in their presence and learn, love them. And it was hard loving somebody you know that just hate on you all the time. Y'all ain't talking to me. A lot of men and women are dead today because of their mouth. So many people are in digs. No, digs ain't no. Cole's funeral home. Pie. Because they opened their mouth. Me and Nick were just talking about little bitty guy. Guy was no bigger than that. They had to carry this little bitty guy out, look like a little boy out of a casino. And he was just talking against the police, what he's going to do. And he had a big mouth. Some little people got big mouths and got a baba boom voice. <laughs> but they have a piercing sound that go through you. And the sound was so great coming through until the police carried him out. And the sergeant had him in the headlock, was about to break his neck. So the two cab drivers, Eric and this other cab driver, got out and stood between the police because they tried to say, get out of here. Now, I don't know what Eric's doing up there big as he is, but he kind of blocked the police big as he is from killing this man because he had said some horrific things. And when the cop went by, he said, take him out of here or we going to beat him down. See, they can see you getting a beating in the casino, but outside the casino, the cameras don't see everything. They take you down the street around the block, and you keep talking. They're not in their squad car, and so now the car can't even see you, and your mouth is still running. Don't you know that's the thing that's got so many people put in jail today is mouth problems? Are y'all still here? The best thing to do is to be quiet. Speak peaceably with all men. If you don't say nothing but yes, sir, yes, ma'am, don't act like you know everything. A soft answer turns away, oh, y'all not talking to me here. You need to be very quiet while you're in the midst of authority. Women that got husbands just keep talking. The man don't come home no more. <laughs> you done ran him away. <laughs> he know he ain't gonna take no beating. <laughs> Baby, he won't even move because he can't take that. Are y'all still here? You want to get him? Go run him some bath water. Get some pebbles and just lay it out in the floor. You know he stink, but by the time you get through him, he gonna be clean. It's obvious that there's some things that you can do, but right here, Nehemiah, he said, man, I ain't coming down to meet with y'all. Because he knew they thought to do him mischief. Some people have no good intent 
concerning you. It's sorry that young people are so naive and just dumb. You old fashioned. Yeah, I'm old fashioned. The Bible says follow the old path and when you find it, walk therein. If you find that path, you're going to be a bright sister or a bright brother. Older people been through what you're going through. And most of the time when, they go on, when you're going through something, they can tell you a thing or two about life. But because you're so quick to know everything and so savvy in your spirit, you find out they don't know everything that the people you talking to or surround yourself with. Don't you know the people that you keep company with is the people that's going to shape and mold your life. If you around people that's partying, acting a fool, run from them because they draw more confusion to themselves than anybody. When a fight break out, it break out because they're in the midst of confusion, delusion. What is that? Drinking. Don't you know what liquor does? Liquor will cause you to see some strange stuff. Drink enough of it. Yeah, just get you a good hooker, Messiah. Drink you a good shot. You wake up all delusional, hanging over. What does Proverbs 20 say? It says wine is a mockery and strong drink is a rage and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Then in Proverbs 23, what do it say? I'm not talking to anybody in here, I'm sure. I'm talking to somebody that's Alice in Wonderland. No, it'll take you away from the real you and give you a character that you don't know nothing about. Don't tell me it don't mess with your mind. It not only will mess with your mind, it'll mess with your sex life. It says, look not thou upon the wine. Is that 23? No, it, yes, 23 and 31. When it is what? When it is red. Okay, stop there. How many of y'all know what grapes do? Moist grapes are dried, even down to raisins. Y'all not talking here. Why y'all so quiet about this here? This is real. Why do you think that when men get drunk, they get a boldness about themselves? When they're not drunk, they're calm. But the moment they get drunk, what happened? They, hey, hey, baby, hey. Hey, baby, hey, oh, hey, uh, uh, yeah, uh-huh. But they had no courage when they were sober. Let me go get me a drink. Now nah, I'm bold. Why can't you be bold? Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Read it. When it giveth his color. In the cup. In the cup. Stop. That's a breach. Somebody say breach. breach. That's a breach in your life. If you start drinking, open the door, you won't be able to shed it. That's why we got alcoholic anonymous. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes. They got to go and get counsel to get off of. I ain't talking about rubbing alcohol. I'm talking about alcohol. Some of them drink rubbing alcohol. Okay, well, I didn't, something new to me. I didn't know they drank rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol. Reach, pre, read. When it moveth itself aright. When it moveth itself aright. At the last. At last. It biteth. It biteth. Like a serpent. It gets like a snake. And stingeth. And stingeth. Like an adder. Like an adder. I used to like to drink this old drink. It was, uh, I'm confessing my fault now. Y'all got to come on here. Don't, don't be looking at me strange. I don't drink that drink no more. Okay. Now, not mad dog, no. <laughs> That's what I didn't have no money. <laughs> this stuff, this stuff was, um, how can I explain this stuff? It, it, it looked like, like chocolate or like milk. Y'all know the name? <laughs> they got Baileys. <laughs> they confess, Will. Baileys Irish cream. All right. 
like the taste of Bailey's. I got to drink of that stuff just like this milk. That stuff, boom! like that. I never drunk no more of that. Because I thought it was cocoa. It made me cuckoo. You don't mess with that stuff. Bailey's Irish cream was something I should have never took and it messed me up. Just before I got my life into Christ, my last encounter I was right up on crack cocaine. And the Lord snatched me away from it because he didn't want me to be a crackhead. That don't mean if you're a crackhead you can't get delivered because he delivered me because I tried it one time and God wouldn't let me find it no more and he saved me from it. The grace of God covers you for those breaches that's in your life. Because anytime there's some gaps in your life, God will break that gap and says, now close the door. I try to tell young people, the door you open is the hardest one to shut. There's some things you just can't open yourself up to. Can I get a witness here? I don't care what nobody say, you got to shut, tell somebody, shut, tell somebody, shut the door. When they begin to build the wall, Simbella, Tobiah, and Gishma begin to make fun of them. And people make fun of something when they think it's not going to work. People told me, you ain't getting that church. I said, that's what you say. The Lord opened the door to that church and showed my name 10 years later, but he let me know it was mine 10 years ago. What am I trying to say? When something is for you, it is for you. You have got to stop letting people talk you out of a blessing that God, oh, I'm talking to somebody in here. I don't let anybody get in my head. If anybody gets up in your head, it's because you opened the wrong door. I want you to go down for just a few moments in that same chapter we was reading. It was very long, so I'm going to skip over to chapter, number chapter 6. Now I'm going down to verse 15. He says, so I, he say, so the wall was finished in the 20th, and he says, fifth day of the month. Y'all see that? It was what? It was finished. I'm talking about Nehemiah. It was finished in the fourth and two days. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 4. Four, y'all got that? Yes, sir. Read. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. Stop right there. Perverseness is cussing. If you hang around a bunch of cussers, y'all hear me? Y'all know any cussing folk? And they see you coming, they still cussing? Tell them don't come over my house no more. Take your cussing tail and sit out. Don't even sit on my porch, sit on the sidewalk. Cause you gonna respect me. Don't bring that cussing. I got babies in the house. I got little children. Don't you bring your cussing self over here. And you better not cuss around my children. Because you cuss around my children, I'm going to rebuke you and call the, the devil dogs out on you. Do not cuss around my children. I had to fight with my own tongue from cussing. See, y'all not honest. Every now and then an evil spirit will come on me and I say, where did it come from, God? He said, there's a spirit around you that's cussing. 
and that spirit can fall on you at any given time. You cannot be a cusser. God ordained your tongue to bless people. Some people take delight cussing other people out. I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Baby, you better watch it because one, one, you can have what they call an aneurysm. And I guarantee you there'll be no more pieces left. You cannot be a cusser. Being a child of God, learn not to cuss. Because that's a breach in your tongue. And don't let nobody think you're all cool to cuss. I, I'm just cool. I just said, no, I both seen you. no, you ain't. You're not cool. You're the biggest fool on this side of heaven. Because if you go into glory, ain't nobody going down the street paid with gold cussing. Does this make sense? Let me go a little bit farther. I think we got the cussing out the way. If you hang out with cussers, you're going to be just like them. Don't hang out with nobody that's going to cuss. Ezekiel 22 and verse 30. Then go to Jeremiah. I got something for you there too. But in Ezekiel 22 verse 30, read. And I sought for a man among them uh -huh. that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it. But I found none. God said, I couldn't find nobody to do it. Now, I want you to understand something. In that time, God was looking for somebody who was going to serve him and wasn't going to be afraid to speak for him, even in the midst of everything that was going wrong. The type of sermons that I preach can be difficult and hard to some people because I go right to the brass truth. And it kind of hurts people a little bit because some of them begin to say to themselves, huh. I can do better than that. And I look at them and I laugh at them because basically their children is learning more than they learn. When I told the ladies, I said, ladies, no more tattoos. And I told them where it was. How did I know that? Just riding down the street in my car, having to look over to the backside of a young girl, and there was a tattoo on her behind. If I seen it, everybody else saw it. Then they started making their bodies a memorial. Why would you make your body a memorial? I see enough stuffed bears tied up on corners where people had tied, where somebody had died. Now somebody's running around with somebody that died tattooed to them. Look, don't feel bad if you did it. That's all right. Just don't do it again. What am I trying to tell you? Be careful. Because it is a spirit behind tattooing. Don't be, don't be offended with me about nothing, please. I'm just telling you the truth. It's, it's written in the word of God. Amen? Amen. Find that for me, Nisi. It's, it's, in, it's written in God's word. I'm going to show you. And then the next thing they got offended with me is piercing. Y'all know what piercing is? Why would you pierce yourself over and over and over again? I met a girl in the place where I go up to the university, and she sits there, and she's one of the sales representatives, but she got piercing everywhere. On her tongue, she got a big rock on her tongue. That thing on her tongue will knock all her teeth out. You know how much dental work costs? I found out recently, they took out four of my teeth, and I've been happy ever since. Now when I talk about y'all and y'all teeth, I be laughing at mine. Because I understand what it costs to keep yourself intact. And then you wonder, well, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with you? You're listening to the world and all the advice that the world gives. You cannot be a person that gets involved with darkness because darkness will become your lot. You have to stay in the light. Somebody say, stay in the light. The world is in trouble. What you got? Leviticus 19 and 28. Read it. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh uh -huh. for the dead, nor print any marks. Stop upon right there. You. Any cuttings for the dead, or print any what? Marks. Marks upon you. Upon you. Now I am the Lord. I am the Lord, and I change not. So if that's in the Bible, 
How am I going to go cut myself up and put all this mess on me? Don't be mad with me because God written it and nobody told you. God knew that you was going to come to this place. The world is going one way and we're going the opposite direction. We're not going to hell. We're going to heaven. Somebody say, I'm going to heaven. That is a breach. Let's straighten out the breach now. Father, I may have missed you, but I apologize. I've missed the mark. No longer shall I ever miss it again. Amen? Amen. No, when it's a breach, it is a breach. And that breach is a contract that will take you away from God. Can I get a witness here? He couldn't find one there. So in Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 1, I'll read this one. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem and see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof. If ye can find a man, if there be any that execute judgment and seeketh the truth and I will pardon it. God says, I'm going to pardon something that's not right. I'm going to correct it. I'm going to straighten it out and I'm going to forgive. Amen. Amen. Read the next verse, Teresa. And though they say the Lord liveth, surely they swear falsely. Stop. They say oh, God liveth, but they swear falsely. Why? Because in their heart, they're not willing to obey him. That's the danger of it all. That's a breach. There's so many breaches in the wall till we have to turn around and say, devil, you're a liar. I'm going to learn how to love everybody, despite of what they have sent me through, despite of what they have done to me, I'm going to learn how to love everybody. I'm going to get rid of that breach, I'm going to tear down that wall, and I'm going to give God the glory. I don't care what mistakes you have made, it's in your past. The place where God is trying to take you is to your destiny. I didn't come here by accident. God made a way out of no way for me, and he blessed me despite of my enemies. And you mean to tell me if God can do that for me, won't he do it for you? He'll do it for anybody that will humble themselves to him. You can't come in here like you got it all together, because nobody does. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. But one thing for sure, if you be, if you be willing and obedient, God said you will eat the good of the land. I'm going to turn that thing around in your life and I'm going to take the crooked place and I'm going to make it straight. When God get through straightening out things of course the enemy has done everything in his power to try to pull you down but be just like King David. He said I will look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. I'm I'm looking at my creator I'm looking at my maker I'm looking at the God that formed me in the beginning before the world was he saw me before the world was he saw you he knew what it was going to be like so let the breakers dash let the thunders roar I got a God that's going to hold me fast and he said I'll never leave you I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you to the end of the age. Somebody shout glory. I don't care what you did. Stop looking at the mess. And stop looking at the mistakes. And stop looking at God. And note this, he that come unto God must first believe that he is. And that he's a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, do your due diligence. It's your time. It's your season. It's your God that's calling your name. Somebody shout glory. Shout glory to God. God said, where well, you've been thrown down, I'm going to pick you up. Well, you lost your strength. I'm going to strengthen you. Your joy been taken. But God said, I'm going to give you joy unspeakable. Come on and shout glory. God got something for you. And I want 
want you to know the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away God got life and life more abundantly look at your neighbor and say I'm ready now I'm ready to live I'm ready to forgive I'm ready to pray I'm ready to stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made me free this breach this gap in the spirit I'm breaking it right now it's coming off of me not only is it going to come off of me it's going to come off of my family it's going to come off of my loved ones these old generational curses they ain't nothing but breaches these old witchcraft spirits ain't nothing but breaches devil you going to let go I command you to go right now in the name of Jesus I'm taking back everything that rightfully belongs to me I'm taking it back I'm not taking just a little bit I'm taking everything devil you got to let go of everything somebody shout glory to God my son is coming out my grandson is coming out of jail my granddaughter is going to be a blessed child my great grands are going to be blessed 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 all of my seed is going to be blessed why because God said so look at your neighbor and say he said so my children are coming out of jail my home is going to be blessed all the houses where God want me to live I'm going to live in houses that I did not build but God saw fit to build it for me because he knew I was coming somebody shout glory to God look at your neighbor and say bless 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 there's no more stress in my life I'm going to give God the glory. I owe that much to him. No demon, no devil going to stop me from praising my God. Simply because what he has spoken over my life from the beginning is now being manifested. Somebody shout glory. I got one more test. I got one more trial that I've got to go through. But I'm singing all the way. Victory oh victory is already mine who am I talking to you got the victory take your love life back take your joy back take the victory back take your anointing back the attack that was on you then know this much that was then this is now now faith is somebody shout Stand on your feet. You know, when God is blessing you, the people that may have wronged you, set all manner of evil against you, hurt you to the core of existence. You know what you tell them? You know, you meant it for my hurt, but God meant it for our good. See, God is love. God don't hold nothing. We the one that incubate the stuff that kind of messes us up every time. We got to forget the past. Because I'm ready to move into my destiny. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to go. You got to go. You got to go. There's higher heights. There's deeper depths that God is trying to take you. Yes, there's an impression made. There's an impact on every one of our lives. The things that I lost, I counted as gain. Somebody say, count as gain. A lot of people are hurting. I want you to stop bleeding right now. God loves you. Amen. The bleeding will stop when you stop. Y'all know what the issue is? The woman with the issue of blood was a strange woman to me. She couldn't stop bleeding for 12 long years. But when she saw Jesus, what did she say? If I could but just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. What am I trying to tell you? The bleeding is about ready to stop. 
God want to heal you from the pain. I got one christening this morning. I'm giving the baby, Bonnie's granddaughter, back to the Lord. Amen. And I want to pray for those of you that just want the bleeding to stop. I want y'all to come right now. Pastors, come up here. I want the bleeding to stop. Come on. I want the bleeding to stop now. It's my grandbaby. You see all the markings on her? I forgive my child, but I want God to forgive her. Amen. Because she's pretty without a mark on her. Amen. Now, if I got to preach like this, and the pain can be so great when you see your own children, it could be something to you. And sometimes people say, he picking on me. I need to pick on everybody in here so that God can heal you. Come on. Let's ask God to stop the bleeding. 